Hi there. Welcome to Microsoft Azure training series. My name is Neeraj Kumar. I'm a cloud evangelist and enterprise architect and I will be your instructor for this course. In this tips and tricks session, we will see how to join an Azure VM to the domain. When we are working in Azure, we usually add a custom domain name to Azure Active Directory in order to have either a hybrid connectivity with on-premises Active Directory or even for a complete management of corporate resources on Azure. Once the custom domain has been added, we synchronize the on-premises users, groups, and other resources with Azure AD in order to allow those users to be able to access resources on Azure as per their access level. Now, in this session, our objective is to join the Azure VM to the Azure Active Directory domain. So here we are on our Azure portal and what we will do is we will be going to Active Directory, which is the Azure Active Directory. Here I have already created a domain with Kurari.com. If I go to custom domain names, we will see that we have the custom domain name Kurari.com already added, which is verified and is marked as primary. Now what we are going to do, we are going to go to the Azure VM and see how the connectivity has to happen. As you can see, now we are on our Azure VM and the public IP address for this is 13.89.237.92. So we are on the Azure VM and the first thing we are going to do is go to the properties of this PC. So I can type in this PC, sorry, and I can right click on it and click on properties. Once we are there, we can see that this is a workgroup, not a domain name and that is what we want. We want to change this from workgroup and add this to the domain. So I can go to change settings and click on change and once we are there, it will ask me for the domain name and I'm going to type in the same domain name that I had added to my Azure Active Directory. That is kurari.com. So once we do that and click on OK, it should join, but it will show an error. Let's see what that is. So we get an error saying an Azure Active Directory domain controller for the domain kurari.com could not be contacted. Okay, and if I click on the details, it shows that the error was this operation returned because the timeout period expired. And scroll down a little, and it will say that the DNS server used by the computer for name resolution are not responding. This computer is configured to use the DNS servers with the following IP addresses, which is 10.0.0.4 and 0.5, but it is not able to reach the domain name servers. So the domain controller is in present. So what we are going to do next? Next, we are going to configure the Azure AD DNS server. And how we do that? Let's see. So we'll click on OK, click on cancel here and minimize. We are back on our Azure portal and this is the page that shows my Azure VM with the IP address of 13.89.237.92, the one that we recently connected. What we are going to do is we are going to click on create a resource and from here I'm going to type in Azure AD domain service and here we are on the page where we can create the Azure Active Directory domain services. If you read the details, it says that the Azure Active Directory domain services lets you join your Azure virtual machines to a domain without the need to deploy or manage a domain controller. Okay, so you don't need a domain controller. The only thing that you need is the Azure AD domain services. So we are going to click on create and then scroll down a little. Our resource group is ADCSL. That is what I had created earlier. And the DNS domain name, it will automatically take as kurari.com because that is what is configured in the Azure Active Directory. Region is Central US. SKU, I will choose as a standard. I don't need an enterprise. I don't need a premium. We are good with that. One more thing before I click on review plus create is the forest type. 
either it can be user or it can be resources and if we hover over the icon that says information it says that if you are choosing user it will synchronize the on premises users and groups to support the ldap and kerberos based applications whereas when you are choosing a resource forest it only syncs users and groups to support legacy resources hosted in azure and that is the difference so we will leave it as it is and click on next we are on the networking tab now so here i will choose the existing vnet and for the subnet i'll choose the one that already exist so i will leave it as it is scroll down we'll click on next and here we are on the administration tab here i'm not making any changes to any of the options here i'll click on next again for synchronization it is all i leave it as default this is for a demo purposes we don't need to make any changes we don't need this so we will leave it to default which is all and once that is done we will click on next and once this has been validated i can click on create it gives us a pop up which says the following resources are final and you won't be able to make any changes after the creation happens so that's a kind of a warning but that is what it is we have already chosen what is needed so this is just a warning we can just avoid and click on okay so now the microsoft provided azure active directory domain services is getting implemented and we will return back as soon as this is done so meanwhile i'll pause the video okay so now the deployment is complete and what i will do is i'll click on the go to resource button here i see that kurari.com is running and if we look at the health it shows a white check mark on the green circle that is the health is perfectly fine as well so if we scroll down a little i'll see that the active directory domain services sku is something that i can change so if you remember from our previous discussion i told you that it can be standard or enterprise or premium for now we have a standard and we do not need to change anything so we are good with that next one is the required configuration steps and this is the most important step after we have set up the azure ad domain services which is the update of the dns server settings for your virtual network so we are going to click on configure and the changes have been saved successfully so that is done and the third one is the required configuration steps this is the documentation for you to enable the azure ad domain services password hash synchronization there are certain documentations that you can follow for now uh, in this demo we do not need them so we are good with it there are other related links as well that you can use to configure your environment now one thing that i would like your attention to be on is about the ip addresses so if i click on the search and search for nic i will find the network interfaces and if i click on it what i will see is i have two different nics here which is 10.0.0.4 and 10.0.0.5 right and if i click one of them say the second one we will see that it has a private ip address of 10.0.0.4 it doesn't have any public ip addresses or any ipv6 addresses okay but it has a typical name associated with the nic we need to find out where this is being consumed so if i click here and then click on all resources i will see that i have a new load balancer which was not there previously and one of the public ip addresses has been created for us and two network interfaces and one of the network interfaces if you remember we just visited with the ip address of 10.0.0.4 so all in all these four resources were created for us when we created the azure active directory domain services let us dig a little deeper into what happens behind the scenes so one load balancer gets created so if i click on the load balancer you will see that it has a public ip address which is 13.86.58.237 and that is the ip address of the dns server that we will be using so how do you check that now if you see the front end ip configuration and click on this one 
you will see the IP address assigned is the same that we just saw, which is 13.86.58.237. And then we also have the backend pools. Now, here is the name, but if I click on this arrow, I will get to see two names here. And it will show me two IP address, which is load balanced by the load balancer. One is 10.0.0.4 and the other one is 0.5. So these are the IP addresses which are load balanced and the load balancer itself has an IP address of 13.86.58.237 which is the public IP address. So the request comes in from the public IP address and then it gets distributed to the two IP addresses. So we have the DNS server which is DNS servers basically which are load balanced with a public IP address we just saw. Now that this is complete, what we are going to do is we are going to go back to our Azure VM. So here we are on our Azure VM and you can see the public IP address through which I have connected. So here again, I will search for this PC and click on the property. So just click on search and type in this PC. And once that appears, just right click and click on properties. So once we are there in the properties, I can just click on change settings, click on change. And instead of the work group, I'll click on domain. And here I will type in the domain name, which is kurari.com. Once that is done, we'll click on OK. And now this time, instead of showing the error message, it is asking me for the username and password. For the username and password, we need to have an organizational identity which must have the relevant permissions to join this Azure VM to the domain. So I'll go back to my Azure portal. I will go to Azure Active Directory. And if I click on users, I will see that I have a domain user which is neeraj at kuradi.com. And if I click on that user, I will see the assigned roles. And I see that this user has a global administrator privileges. So since this user has the global administrator privileges, this user will be able to join the Azure VM to the domain. Now, if you want to see how the custom domain was added to Azure Active Directory and how the user was created, here is a link on your screens which you can follow to my other video which explains how to do that in detail. Back to our Azure VM here. Now we are going to provide the user ID and password. So I will type in my global administrator username, which is neeraj at kurari.com and my password. And then click on OK. There you go. Now you see that it says that welcome to kurari.com domain. And this Azure VM is now connected to your domain. So if I click on OK, it will say that before restarting, save any changes because after you add it to the domain, after you join this Azure VM to the domain, it needs to be restarted. And uh, because I don't have any unsaved changes uh, that will spoil my work, I'll just go ahead and restart the system and see you when the system has been restarted. So I'll pause the video here and come back after the Azure VM is up and running. So we are back on our Azure VM and I've just restarted it. So let's see how it looks like. So again, I will, what I'll do is I'll go to local servers and here you can see the domain as kurari.com. So it has changed. We can also verify it by clicking on the search and typing this PC and I'll right click on it, click on properties. And here also you see that the domain name is now kurari.com. So this Azure VM is now connected to the domain. So that concludes our demo and this session as well. Hope you like it. And if you do, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that I remain motivated to bring more such tips and tricks for you. Until we meet next time, 
keep assuring thank you so much